mid-February and we're finally starting to get some actual usable snow here in the Carolinas, so I figured for today's video I'd make a quick little like in-depth tutorial in Lightroom showing you how I edit winter photos because believe it or not there's actually quite a few unique challenges and also opportunities that come about when you're shooting during that cold winter season. So today we're going to be using Lightroom to turn this photo into this photo. Pretty cool, right? Before that, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. First of all is TikTok. I have been unfortunately posting on it. No dancing or anything like that. Pretty much just short vibey clips, similar to what you might expect to see on my Instagram story. And the other thing of note is that at the time this video goes live, I'm most likely on a plane heading on my way to a very exciting trip. And I can't wait to show you the footage from that, but because I'm not in town, for this next week or so. I will not be posting a video next week, maybe not even the week after, but it'll be worth it. So stick with me, subscribe anyway. All that being said, let's bust open Adobe Lightroom and get to editing this image. So here's the raw image we're starting with. And of course, the first thing I'm gonna do is crop this. I like to use four by five because I'm posting almost all these photos on Instagram and not really anywhere else. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna get into some basic color correction. And this is where you'll right off the bat start to notice that it's a little different to edit winter photos as opposed to summer or fall photos. And that's because getting the white balance right is very tricky and very important because you want that snow color to be very, very accurate. If it's a little bit too warm or a little bit too cool, the image is just gonna look completely off. You can try a couple things, like for example, I'm gonna try using the auto white balance feature in Lightroom, doesn't look particularly good. So what I'm gonna try instead is using the color picker here to select the color of the snow also doesn't look very good, so instead I'm just gonna eyeball it. If you go through the different options and none of them look that good, one good thing to do is to just try sticking with what your camera shot. Usually what you did in camera, if you did it right, is the best thing to go with instead of trying to fake it in post. So that's what I'm gonna do here, is just use the as shot profile here and see what we can do with that. Having all that snow in the frame also makes it a little bit trickier to get the exposure right. So what I'm gonna do is what I usually recommend for snowy photos, which is to expose brighter than you normally would with another image. Because if that snow is too dark, if it falls into shadow, it's gonna look kind of slushy and just weird and gross in your image. So expose brighter when you're editing photos with snow. But you also have to be careful not to overexpose because then you're just gonna have an image with a bunch of white overexposed area and then like trees sticking out of that white void and it's just gonna look weird. Once I've done that, I'm just gonna bring the shadows back down a bit to compensate and then play with that ratio of shadow to highlight throughout the image to get something that I like. Then I'll move down to the next little panel here, which is the tone curve. And I basically just use this to add some contrast into the image and further fine tune that ratio of light to dark, shadow and highlight throughout the image. And now that I'm seeing this, I can see that the image is a little bit off in terms of white balance. It's a little too purple and a little maybe too blue in my opinion. So I'm gonna go back up and try adjusting that just to compensate. Now that I've done with the curves and I've got the image all straightened out, I'm gonna move down to the HSL hue saturation and luminance tab here and start fine tuning things a little bit more in terms of style. You'll notice with winter photos, there's inaccurate colors and artifacts everywhere throughout the image. So what I usually do to deal with that is just desaturate the aqua, blue, purple, and magenta almost all the way to completely gray. And that deals with just about all of those artifacts that you get from the snow. It also makes it to where the snow is just white as opposed to being blue or orange and having some weird inaccurate tint to it. Next, I'll adjust the green. Now for winter photos, I like to have the green definitely a bit desaturated just like I do during every other season. But for winter, what I do a little bit differently is shift it to the right here to give it more of that cooled off kind of Christmassy type vibe. And finally, the point of this image is to have this subject in the middle of this person's house pop out of the image. So what I'm gonna do is just adjust the saturation of the orange and red in this image to get it to a color that I like and to where it stands out from the rest of the photo. And this is one of the opportunities that I really love about shooting during that cold winter season is that you get sometimes this blanket of snow over everything. So you have this opportunity for kind of visual minimalism in your photos, which is something that I'm really drawn to when I'm shooting and editing. In snowy winter photos, almost the entire image is just straight up white, the most minimal color that you can shoot. And then there's just like a couple key colors popping out in the image. Here it's red 
and green. So it just gives you that unique opportunity to use that snow to your advantage and isolate that subject really well. That being said, I like to use some editing foolery to draw the eye to that subject even more. The way I would normally do that in Lightroom is by using this gradient tool and drawing on a black gradient at the bottom. But as you can see, if I do that here, it has that effect of making the snow look very weird and slushy, not a very nice, happy, wintry vibe. So what I'm gonna do instead is actually use that exact same gradient tool in Adobe Lightroom, and instead what I'm gonna do is draw it on at the top of the image, and then drag that down to the house, and then I'm basically gonna create a fake cloud on this mountaintop behind the house. So what I'll do is reduce the saturation a bit, like it's just a gray cloud back there. Then I'll reduce the clarity all the way down to soften that part of the frame, and then finally take the dehaze option way down, and that's where you're really gonna see that part of the image pretty much just turn into a cloud. And I think after some fine tuning there, we've got a pretty interesting foggy, hazy, kind of almost like blizzard, snowstorm cloud type look. Definitely draws the eye to that subject a little more. Then I'm just gonna very subtly balance it out by doing the same thing on the bottom of the frame, but not making it nearly as strong. I don't want it to look like a cloud as much as just kind of like some haze on the lens or something like that. As you can see, if we flick the adjustments on and off in Lightroom, we've come quite a long way from what we started with, but I wanna make a couple additional tweaks just to finish everything off using Adobe Photoshop. So I'm just gonna right click and edit this image in Photoshop CC. So the first thing I'm gonna do now that we're in Photoshop is just duplicate this layer and call it edit. That way, whatever edits I make to this layer, I still have that background layer behind it that doesn't have those. If I decide that I wanna revert back to where I started, the first thing I'm gonna do doesn't really have anything to do with winter editing, but I'm gonna use the dodge and burn tool to kind of brighten and darken some certain areas that I think need a little more TLC, such as this road at the bottom part of the frame, just cause it looks lighter than the other road, which was kind of pissing me off. And then I might also darken the roof of the house just a little bit by making this to where it affects the highlights and just bringing those down a tiny little bit to where the house looks a little less overexposed. Another thing you might have to do is manually adjust the colors of some areas in the frame because you can get that weird artifacting and inaccurate colors in your image when you're shooting around this time of year. So for example, in this image, we've got very weird bright red trees. Not exactly sure how those showed up in this shot, but I don't like them. So what I'm gonna do is use the lasso tool and turn the feather option up to maybe like 20 pixels just so we don't have that rough edge. And then I'm just gonna mask around these trees using that lasso tool so that I can select them. And then I'm just gonna hit Command J to lift them onto their own layer. Once we've isolated those trees, I'm just gonna use the hue saturation option and just desaturate the reds so that we get rid of that inaccurate color in that part of the image. Then I'm just gonna do that exact same thing in this other side of the image to clean up the trees in that area. And then we should be just about done correcting everything. That's looking just about good enough for me. So now it's time to add a final touch that I add to every single photo I edit, which is the diffused highlight glow effect. So I'm gonna start by merging all three of those layers that I just used to edit. And then I'm gonna use an adjustment called color range in Photoshop. I'm gonna use this to select the highlights, those brightest parts of the image. And since there's snow all over the frame, I'm not gonna do what I usually do with this effect, which is to isolate the very brightest highlights like in the sky. What I'm instead gonna do is turn up this fuzziness option to where we select a lot more of that snow on the ground. Then I'm just gonna click okay to select those areas and hit Command J once again to lift them onto their own layer. Once I've got those on a separate layer, I'm just gonna use a Gaussian blur filter to blur those areas out, and just smooth those highlighted parts of the image out a bit. This I think just helps to soften out the image and draw the eye to that subject where you want people to be looking. But you'll notice in this particular image, it's also softened the roof of the house out quite a lot. So what I'm gonna do is get the eraser tool and not necessarily erase it completely. Maybe use like a 70% opacity or something like that and just erase around the house so that we're not affecting that area as much. Once I've done that, I'm gonna head back to Lightroom and make one very final adjustment, which is to tweak the sharpness and noise reduction. This just helps to clean up the image a little bit more and get it ready for your Instagram feed. So I'm gonna turn up the sharpness a little bit, maybe turn up the radius a tiny little bit as well, 
and then I'm gonna turn the noise reduction up just a little bit to smooth everything out throughout the image. And as we can see, we've just cleaned it up a tiny little bit, made it a little smoother and sharper throughout the image. And that is the final shot. Here's what we started with, and here's what we made out of it. Yeah, quite a, quite a difference there. Now an important thing to keep in mind here is that this is just my style or my way of editing winter photos. Plenty of other photographers do it very different ways and with very different styles, and they make it look awesome. For example, I know of a ton of photographers who edit snow by making it very blue and really cooling it off so it has that cold feeling. That's not what I would do, but that's something you can experiment with to develop your own style of editing your own photos. But regardless of the style that you choose to shoot and edit your own images in, the fact of the matter is winter is a great time and a great opportunity for photographers to get out there, test their creativity and challenge themselves to take better photos in kind of challenging different conditions. And as challenging as those conditions can be, I guarantee you, you'll enjoy the experience and you'll get some great photos from it. So don't let the cold stop you from going out there and getting some sick winter photos. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video, learned some new techniques from it. And if you did, do feel free to share your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new filmmaking tutorials every week or so. So subscribe to see the next one. Keep creating, and I'll see you there. Thank you.